what's up guys it's Charles here with d2ipdesigns.com and I'm bringing you another tutorial today is going to be a Cinema 4D tutorial where I'm going over my intro a lot of people have been requesting this and I finally broke down and decided I would do it um, as you all know who have seen it this wire frame gets built up over time and then let's fast forward it here we have the outer part go flying over and everything comes together. Um, it looks harder than it actually is. The, the biggest thing is it's very time consuming. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm only going to show you how to do it on a T because a T is pretty simple and it shouldn't take too long to do. And obviously I don't want this tutorial to be like, you know, five parts or something like that. So let's just try and make it one part. So let's go ahead and just get started right away. Let's grab out a cube. Obviously this will need to be much smaller. We want the, we want it to be able to fit just inside of the T. So let's do something like that. Let's make it 16. There we go. Go ahead and drag it up. Bring down the Y. Um, that's good for now. And then the depth, what, what do we make the text? Okay. So the depth on the T is 50. So let's make this 42. We don't really have to make the depth that small. Let's increase it like that. Alright. This doesn't have to be perfect, just want to get it fairly fairly close to center and in the right position. Bring that down a little more. Alright, I think that'll work for now. And now I'm going to hit Control C, Control V dupl to duplicate the layer, obviously. I'm going to rotate it like that. And something like that should work. Alright, I'm going to just select both Oop. and drag them back like that. And then this needs to be shrunk down this way. Alright, let's go ahead and turn off the T for now. And now we just have the cubes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to MoGraph, or not MoGraph, what am I saying? I need to go grab an atom array drop this in it. I'm going to turn off the other cube as well. We're not we're working with that right now. And I'm going to bring this down to 1. Actually, let's do 0. 0.5 and 1. Yeah, that'll work. Still a little bigger than I normally would use, but it's fine. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shrink this. There's really no reason for me to measure everything out the way I did. I don't know why I did that. It just felt like wasting time, I suppose. Okay, and now from here we're going to go to MoGraph and then Cloner. Go ahead and drag the Atom Array and the Cube into the Cloner. Um, and we want to take off that and turn on the X. Or not turn on the X, but bring everything out on the X. And what we want to do is we want this, we want to line this up. So as you can see, as they, as we, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? As we extract the duplicates from one another, is that, I don't know if that's the way I want to put it, but we'll go with that. Um, we want to try and line up this with this. We want to get it, like, perfectly. So what I'm going to do is like that. That looks pretty good to me it is close enough. And now as we duplicate it, it just keeps extending onward. And so now what we need to do is we need to duplicate it until it fits inside the T. And so now we need to move this over to the end here. And let's do a couple more duplicates. And that fits like really, really well. Okay, as you can see, we have some stuff sticking up from the top here, so we'll just go ahead and scale down 
the Y a little bit, or not the Y, but the X rather. And that solves that problem. All right, so there we go. We have the first part of the frame completed. And now we just need to basically do the same thing for the bottom section here. So once again, cloner. You know what, guys? I'm just going to pause the video here because, you know, actually, you know what? No, we'll just continue on with it. Why, why bother pausing? It doesn't take very long or anything. Okay, so now we got the cloner back out. Just go ahead and drag the cube in there. Well, first we want to grab an atom array. There we go. Go ahead and put the cube in there. Turn it on, of course. Atom array. We did 0.5 for the cylinders and then 1. Okay, and there's that. So now let's shrink this cube down. Let's do something like that. 15. Let's go with 15. Alright. Now, now drag it into the cloner. And once again, we need to change this, bring it down. Let's get them to line up. Actually, it appears they line up pretty well already. There we go. All right. And let's bring this all down. Let's turn this back on so we can actually see it, though. All right. So about there is good. Turn it back off so we can see. How many duplicates are we going to need? something like that. Now as you can see the issue is it's not lining up with the other one very well so we'll have to mess with it a little bit, tweak it to try and get it right. Um, let's see what some of the things we can do is um, obviously we can reduce the overall size of everything a bit and then shrink this down Let's change this to 14 and then come back in here and do 14. Alright, so that lines it up pretty close and then we can just bring this up a little bit to bring it in the rest of the way. Alright, that's good enough. Uh, that should work. Okay, these little minute details like this no one will actually notice in the actual animation. Um, so, you know, you don't have to be really really precise okay so now that's done let's go ahead and turn this back on alright so let's go ahead and start messing with the Motex so I'm gonna go ahead and make it editable actually before I do that I wanna mess with some of these settings here let's go to here and turn it on the grid and just start messing with stuff here. Alright. Now, I want a lot of pieces on this. I think it'll look good with as many possible pieces as we can get. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn caps on. What in the world? Oh, there we go. I was wondering <laughs> what was going on there for a second. Alright. So there's that. Um, whoa. I don't want these uh, to be overly large. So we'll do that. Yeah, I guess that'll work. Alright. Now, let's see. What else can we do? Alright, um, I guess that'll work. Um, let's go ahead and make this editable now again. Um, I don't get what's going on. It is irritating me though. Um, Alright, okay. I just had to make that edible, I guess. Connect objects, delete. Now what in the world? Alright. Well, this isn't working very well, is it? Let's 
select connect objects delete there we go it's about time jeez that was irritating the hell out of me all right now let's go up to where is it mesh create tools knife and let's go ahead and make some cuts I really want to cut this thing up so you can get a lot of nice pieces um, let's see visible only I'm gonna unselect that restrict selection let's do loop here do I want to loop it? I don't know line let's see how this will work here should cut straight through yep alright it cuts straight through that's what I was wanting alright so now we'll just make a bunch of cuts they don't have to be neat cuts either as a matter of fact, it may look better if they're very random, so let's just do some very random cuts. Like so. I kept mine a little neater than this, but I'm just trying to do it quick for tutorial and time's sake. Alright. Um, that's good enough. If you want to, you could go to select and then select all. And you could come into here. I think it's here. Let's see. Yeah. Commands, subdivide, or triangulate, and that will make it even smaller. Um, I did that online, but I'm not going to worry about it. So next, let's go to MoGraph Poly Effects. There we go. Drop it in right there. And now we're going to go to MoGraph Effect uh, Random, and then we also need MoGraph Effect Plane. Actually, go back. I think I need to select Poly Effects. Plane. Yep, there we go. All right. Now we need to select both of these and go to Fall Off Box. Wait, Capsule Box. I wanted Box, not Capsule. Okay. And now for the random, I'm just going to go, actually no, again, select both of them, change the fall off to, I don't know, 25, something like that. Uh, that should be good. Scale, I'm scaling both of these up significantly, like that. Actually, they really don't have to be that large. Let me just, I want it so it encompasses everything. So I'll have to scale it up a little bit more. Probably something like that. Anyway. Let's go to plane. And we're going to go to parameters. And turn on the scale. I'm actually going to turn position off because we don't need that. Um, let's do uniform scale, minus one. And as you can see, everything disappears, which is exactly what we want. Um, although, for at, although at the moment, I do want to be able to see it. Um, now, under random, we're going to go ahead and adjust some of these settings here. Alright, probably something like that. Now, let's go ahead, and as you can see, you get everything coming together. And if you wanted to, with both these selected, you go to fall off, go to cylinder, not cylinder, I keep messing it up, um, sphere, there we go and we could go ahead and shrink both these down and get a cool random breaking apart or coming in effect like that so the options are pretty much endless you can do whatever you want um, it's important that these both scale together so you want when you um, add in the random and plain add them in both together and then uh, adjust them together, you know, like the scale and everything. You want to adjust all that stuff together. Okay, 
So now that we have that done, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to turn this stuff off for now. Oh, not the cloner. I want those on. Um, this here, I'm going to go ahead and turn all that stuff off. And now let's just go ahead and animate the frame. So let's have this shoot across first and this go up. So it's pretty simple. We're just going to bring this all the way down to one, or actually zero. And then control and then click on this little circle. It'll turn red and you'll see a keyframe get placed. And then let's move ahead like 15 keyframes. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I believe is how many we needed. Yeah. Alright, and now just control and click that circle again, and it's all keyframed. I'm going to go ahead and move that ahead. Now, why is that staying there? Huh. Alright, let me see here. Um, I'm trying to figure out why that's there. Alright, let's just go ahead and keyframe the scale real quick. So, turn all this to zero. And then let's move it ahead, bring it back to 100, and keyframe. Alright, so there we go, that works. Of course we may want to separate this out a little bit more so there's not, because now it comes in what in the world is it doing? It's acting really weird. Oh, I understand because I have it selected. What? Okay, there we go. No issue. Alright, so there you go. Obviously, it's a little fast. You can slow it down by separating that with the keyframes more, but this is just a tutorial. I'm not going to worry about it. And then you can animate the bottom part here the same exact way as you did the top, just, you know messing with the uh, keyframes on the count and I think that is probably it um, you can go ahead what, what am I doing here you can go ahead and animate this stuff here same way with keyframes just you know um, go ahead and keyframe that there move it ahead you know I don't know 10 frames have this sweep across like that, keyframe, and there you go. Obviously that's really fast, so let's slow that down. Alright, well anyway guys, that's the basics, you know. Um, you guys should be able to figure it out from here. There's not too much involved, just a lot of time and effort. So anyway guys, I'm out of here. Peace.